memoir time. And Carl Rove is the memoir that comes next. We know that Vice President Cheney's working on one, President Bush. We won't ask you your plans for, for memoir <laughs> times. Uh, but there's an excerpt today and, a, and a, it may be a startling quote to some. Carl Rove writes in his book, would the Iraq war have occurred without WMD, weapons of mass destruction? I doubt it, he writes. Congress was very unlikely to have supported the use of force resolution without the WMD threat. The Bush administration itself would probably have sought other ways to constrain Saddam, bring about regime change, and deal with Iraq's horrendous human rights violations. I can't remember anybody this close to the president it saying we went to war under a false pretense. That doesn't mean that there was a lie here. That, that is not what he's saying, but a false pretense. What is the? Uh, there, that, that's an impl That's a. That's an implication, not just on a legacy, but that sends a message to the world that isn't very uh, good for the U.S. reputation. I think it's so. not that we did it on a false pretense. We did it on the basis of intelligence that turned out not to be true. This was intelligence that the intelligence community believed. The U.S. intelligence community believed, other services across the world did. It was based on U.N. inspection records. We all thought Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. So then did we outrush? We got there. Should we have done more checking? I mean, is that, the, well, is that one of the lessons here that, you know what, you have to take this intelligence stuff and take more time? Well, the, the, I think if you to talk about Iraq as a rush to judgment, when we had 12, hour, 12 years of diplomacy, 16, 17 UN Security Council resolutions, three inspection regimes where President Clinton ordered the use of force against Iraq, this is a situation where some people say that it was a war of preemption. I think it was a war of last resort. I think we had exhausted all diplomacy, all efforts. Uh, we had sanctions regimes. I think we ex we exhausted all efforts short of war. And it's very clear when the president made his decision to go to war that the inspection regime was not getting at the truth in Iraq and that the economic sanctions which were preventing Saddam Hussein from using oil revenues right. for pressing his neighbors, supporting terror, doing WMD, were about to collapse. Mm -hmm. So I think the president really played the this out as long as possible and he would tell you today that he thinks if the international community had re had retained its unity if President Chirac from uh, Chancellor Schroeder and President Putin had stayed with us in putting pressure on Iraq we might have been able to do this without the resort to war but I think it was a case where diplomacy was exhausted and the issue really was where we, whether the United States and the United Nations and the whole international community was just going to basically surrender to Saddam Hussein or whether those 17 UN Security very, resolutions but, were going to but be. But very quickly, I mean, the damage, you, just as a national security expert, when you're trying to win over support with Iran, uh, right, right now with Iranian, uh, with, with, with these Iranian sanctions, where we're basing it on our more, our intelligence reports, combination there, we had, I remember right. with President Obama, Gordon Brown, Nicholas Sarkozy at the G20 in Pittsburgh standing up together, and they're trying to make the case of the United Nations. Our intelligence was wrong on Iraq. Is it not unfair for another country to say, boy, you were wrong there. Why do we think you're right now? Well, in the irony is on Iran is we may have been wrong on the other side of the ledger. Oh, Referring the, to the 2007 yeah. NIE. 2007 NIE said they had suspended their military program in 2003. Now it looks like maybe they had not. So intelligence figures in these issues. But I think one of the lessons is you can't make intelligence the litmus test. It is one input to the president. Remember, the reason to go against Saddam Hussein was, yes, WMD, which the whole world thought he had. He had it in 90 and 91. He did not account for it and did not come clean as to what had happened to it. Therefore, the world rightly assumed he still had it. But also, he invaded his neighbors, a 10-year war with Iran, invading Kuwait, oppressed his people, supported terror. There was a long list of the why Saddam Hussein was a disruptive influence in his neighborhood and a threat to the United States. And it was really all of those things that caused the president to make the decision. Let's move on while we have a few minutes on a, a different topic, the detention 